welcome back disc golf fans to Austin, Texas for the 2024 Open at Austin presented by Flight Factory. Excited to be out here in Austin. This is the second year the Disc Golf Pro Tour has showed up to the Harvey Pinnock property. Brand new course this year for FPO and MPO. Excited to check it out. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Andrew Fish. Right, you are, Nathan. Two stacked fields going to compete on a course that bears only passing resemblance to last year's layout. You see there the DGPT standings. We are set up for uh, just a barn burner of a year with talent deep, deep, deep down the leaderboard. Yeah, new names and um, names you've heard before all going to be trying to get into that championship. Uh, the hardest it's ever been, I'll say, this year. Straight into the FPO round one coverage out here. The Harvey Pinnock course got a par 66 for the ladies. Um, some of the same tee pads with a couple different pars, but well redesigned from last year with uh, Sarah Hokum involved with some of that. And you see in part of the fly through here, there's a good mix of open. There's a good mix of some very fresh woods cutouts uh, that, that really change the dynamic of this. It means we're not just playing on golf fairways, but we're, we're working into and out of the woods quite a bit. Yeah, something quite refreshing to see when you are using a golf-inspired property. Getting started off well here, Katrina Allen inside circle one. You see the flag on top of the basket not doing a whole lot. That was not always the case throughout round one. So getting on the board early, very important to your score. And round... Yeah, and an opportunity for a lot of the ladies to get on the board early here with a eagleable par five at 680. Uh, this is the same hole for MPO and FPO, uh, just as a par five for the ladies and a par four for the MPO field. Here, Evelina getting that nice bounce off of that grip six wall. Great opportunity for the Eagle, and it looks like she's taking advantage of that. Absolutely, take them where you can. And that sure looks like it's gonna be set up for a tap-in Eagle for Evelina. Watch this clean flight, late stability. And yeah, just on the backside of the hill. And something I like to see, a bit of a forehand or lefty-inspired second hole here, off to a quick start on the turn and to the right. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, had to set yourself up in a good position on the outside of the landing zone in order to get the cleanest lane in. And Katrina from circle two, good-looking stroke there. Sometimes the putter hasn't been her friend, but uh, in good shape thus far. Yeah, able to start the round two for two. Evelina gaining the stroke, still gonna have the box on hole three. And almost back-to-back -back Eagles hitting the basket for the ace on hole three. Gonna have a nice birdie though. Yeah, no doubt. Love to, love to see the good vibes on the card. Once again, Evelina gonna earn a rewind from Gatekeeper as it comes up just off the cage. And Scoggins given an example for the forehand to follow and same result not quite as uh, not quite as dramatic I guess yeah not as flashy but <laughs> a little closer tap in for her there and uh, quite the opposite of hole three you get to go back down that hill now and the wind you mentioned is usually pretty relevant up at the top of this hill you can see those banners up there and blowing right in their face Own Scoggins on the par four fifth. Gonna convert from circle two. Get it, get it, get it. Evelina on the seventh with the big and time par save. Huge par save and you see the transition there from, from the open into the woods and how different it is. Uh, this is the second wooded hole on the course. And 
as you can see, Evelina not quite as close putting for the eagle in here, but able to save that big par. We'll jump ahead to hole 15 with Cat Merch from deep. Yeah, so around the same time, this chase card of ladies is in the woods. Cat Merch already threw 15 holes, setting up a pretty hot round. The narrow par 5 11th, and Katrina making short work of that. Yeah, we'll skip that. ahead to 13 now with a big river carry. Evelina fighting through the tree on the corner. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <A> bit, <laughs> you hear her say sorry there. She knows that was a bit of a cheeky <laughs> shot. Got a little lucky around that tree. Own, as we're used to seeing, going to be out here. Was draining putts from circle two. Seems like a bit of a lower wind this morning. You can see the flag on top of the basket moving some, but those almost all day out here, I felt like I saw those flag banners in the background just waving all over the place. Yeah, I know that leading up to the event, a big narrative among the players and staff was, are we going to get three rounds in? Uh, fortunately, this day one, no complications due to lightning or rain. Yeah, the forecast was very ominous all week long it, it's with making all the players expect it to not go well as you see a bunch of birdies here for the ladies on 17. And as we saw that clip from Cat Merch shooting the hot round uh, to take the early lead, one of three rounds here at this elite event. Yeah, stacked up there, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We'll move us into the MPO layout here. The Harvey Pennant course is going to be a par 63, uh, about 800 feet or so longer than the ladies layout. Uh, so still on the shorter side. So what we've kind of gotten used to seeing from the Disc Golf Pro Tour out here on these ball golf courses. Yeah, no doubt. And I think the woods are an important component of that. There's four or five holes that are in the mid 500s or 600s as par fours and still scored you know, close to par or above. Lazat, yeah, the, the wide route on hole one. And look at the wind drag that over, Nathan. Yeah, lots. I want to say lots more wind here now this afternoon than what we just saw from the ladies round in the morning. Pretty strong right to left now. Do you see how wide these guys are pushing this out? Almost all the way over that bridge. Both of them working their way back into circle one. And Euliberry getting those reads. Going to follow it. A little bit short-armed but at only 400 feet, not a huge issue. Hit at circle's edge and let the wind take you the rest of the way. Yeah, and one of the things I've kind kind of forgotten about is uh, the ground play that you get as well with the shorter grass out here on some of these ball golf courses. Uh, get a lot more forward skip than you're used to in the woods or on some longer grass, so 400 feet can really turn into 380 sometimes. Lazat from back on the fairway. This is going to be his third. And able to park it to save the par. Hole two with the, the wind conditions in particular were very, very challenging. Texas native Mason Ford continuing his good work early in 2024. Yes, yeah, solid putting. Uh, basket just hanging on to that one. He gives it a nice little tap. And a bit of a tailwind on two's tee shot and three's tee shot. Uh, this one playing a lot longer than the 360 that you see up there. Uh, quite a bit uphill and it's not OB, but that stuff on the right, pretty nasty if you get in there. And wow, look at the wind holding this shot over for Matty O. Skips on the high level and then flares down the hill my goodness boy that, roller coaster yeah that disc just did all sorts of things we'll have to take another look at that likely one of the more stable discs in Matty O's bag but headwind 
along with downhill, both things wanting to make the disc, ask, disc act more understable. What a neat flight to watch. And he will finish the drill, grab the birdie, and delight the crowd once more. Hole five with that tailwind that we saw playing as headwind on four opens up the eagle opportunity if players are daring. Yeah, just under 500 feet of carry if you do want to go for it. Simon ends up with the aggressive layup play way off to the right side over there. Yeah, would have scattered the gallery. But the no-nonsense approach for the easy birdie. Now, Mason, most of the hard work done getting your way down this fairway, uh, but makes a huge putt to connect on that birdie. Great birdie to get. You see 535 feet, uh, but one of the more difficult par fours you'll play with the OB along with Woods. Hole seven, same idea. 305, pretty much straight ahead. But out of bounds lining both sides, tricky low line to have to hit. Yeah, and Matty O uh, able to have a 50% birdie rate this round. That's pretty nice as he connects on a big par putt there. And yeah, gonna, have, gonna be able to follow it in. We'll jump ahead to watch Anthony Barella here on hole 15. Only 345, but tough to manage the wind. Look at it dance in the air. Yeah, it looks like he's just going butter with the putter there. Super impressive managing the wind with a putter on that. And getting back to the woods, hole 18. Pretty strong finishing hole with some OB right and OB left. Through a tight wooded gap, Anthony Barella able to hit the birdie. And that was critical for him to shoot eight down. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, jumping onto the lead card for round two. Would have to yeah. wait for later cards to finish to discover that. Anthony with the 56% birdie made that round. One extra birdie there on his card. And indeed, he is there on lead card coverage, uh, along with Corey Ellis, Andrew Marweed, and Gavin Rathbun. All right, so you saw a little bit of that FPO action in round one. Uh, we're going to see Rebecca Cox, Owen Scoggins, Evelina Salonen, and Missy Gannon for the most part in this round two chase card highlight coverage. Uh, winds substantially calmer on Saturday than on Friday, but there was a weather delay in the, uh, in the middle of the FPO rounds. Yeah, early weather delay, but after that, pretty nice throughout the day. Still another ominous forecast that turned out to be not all that bad. What'd you think about uh, walking over this bridge to start your round every day? Well, I, I really appreciated that in the uh, reconfigured layout, as we're going to watch Missy throw this beautiful shot again, I really appreciate having the flow improved to have the start and finish of the course very spectator friendly and right near the parking areas. Um, you know, that was a good logistical touch. And, you know, kind of walking over the bridge was a, okay, we're in this now, uh, in invitation to that mindset. Yeah, and get you right into that course. You should see Owen get inside the circle as well. And Rebecca Cox starting off the round with a nice circle two putt there. Yeah, that's big time. Pretty friendly opening hole, a lot of wide landing zone, but it is an elevated basket. Missy now throwing her third. This is an approach for birdie on the second. Yeah, he uses that hill nicely. There is a little bit of OB back behind that basket. Could come into play. Looks like we might see a replay of round one shot here from Owen. Comes up just on the other side of the basket, but still going to card that birdie. 
Gannon with the driver out to the right side and late stability. Going to run it into the circle. What a difference the wind makes on this hole. Yeah, being able to control the whole flight of your disc rather than just having to rely on stability and hoping that you match the angle correctly. Evelina, skip. Oh, and the flashing by the chains. Yeah, just a bit deep on the skip. But yeah, with, with low wind, you can about throw any disc in your bag on this hole and feel pretty comfortable with it. But as soon as you get that headwind, you're going to have to have that stability. Scoggins gets the putter working early, her fourth straight to start the round. Yeah, not a bad way to go about it. Missy Gannon going to be looking to match that putt here. And she has also gone 4 for 4 to start her round. And hole 5. Looks like Owen wasn't totally sure about that, but now she does get to celebrate. Yeah, likely closer than she'd want to be to the OB also. And here we're finally getting to see that tee shot of hole six. Own taking the left side, not one that you see done too often, but gets way up the fairway. And just to give some context for how challenging this hole is, as we see Own put herself near circle's edge for a birdie look. It played 1.2 over par for the field. Own Scoggins, though, has that six-pack to start her round, not worried about that 1.2 over par. Six under now. Gannon playing the left side on hole seven. Wow, and using all of that left side fairway, almost touching everything on the way. And Own going to concede the par on the seventh. You'd almost boo if it wasn't from a hundred feet or so. I don't know. I feel like she might have. She might have been trying to make that. <laughs> and hole eight, very challenging. Own able to card the par on that also. Yeah, very well executed. But yeah, that second shot on eight. We haven't got, really got to see much of hole eight yet. It's very difficult to be in the correct place. As Owen gets a birdie on nine. And also on 11. As we get to see a little bit of tree love here for Rebecca Cox making the double mando. Catching that first tree, she kicks right on up there in the circle. Yeah, early release. We'll see it from a different angle here. And yeah, yeah. what a touch. Yeah, everybody can use a little bit of love out here on the Pro Tour. Yeah, you don't expect it to happen on the, the one of the more open holes, though. And own back on track with the birdies. Back to back on 11 and 12. Crossing over a pretty big river here. Not too hard to carry, but definitely does add a bit of a pucker factor. You kind of see that better from this reverse angle. A lot of width to carry, and then have to fight very far left. Own, not going to have to putt much on that. Yeah, her second turkey of the round there. And on that same hole, we've got another huge putt here from Rebecca Cox. Able to connect from circle two. And hole 14. Oh. Pretty interesting combo hole here. Newly cut wood section and then playing out onto a mound that's surrounded by a bunker and golf green. And 
Although there was no trees touched there, she still got a little bit of tree love, I'd say. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was the, the absence of tree love. She's absolutely parked now for the birdie. Own backing it up. Going to be up there for birdie as well. Now for five in a row. I tell you what, when that putter gets going, it is a microwave. Watch out for the aluminum if it's in there. It's going to be on <laughs> fire here soon. As Owen now going for her second set of six birdies in a row. Almost catches the ace on 16. She does get that birdie. And going to be able to approach to take one final birdie, closing out a 10.55 round. Yeah, 13 under par. I believe the highest rated round of the year so far for the FPO division. Indeed. And uh, despite another very solid seven down from Cat Merch, Owen Scoggin's going to take the final round lead. for the second round of the MPO coverage. A lot lower win today, like we saw from the FPO round. So what what I kind of expected to see was a lot more lower scores, a lot of the double digit scores to come in today. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of before the tournament, I was talking with some folks and we figured that seven or eight was about the minimum to stay in any kind of contention for uh, top 10, top 20, which suggests that double digits is what you need to stay in the top 10. Niklas Antila getting three or four skips well into the circle on hole one for a good start. Yeah, a lot lower than we've seen a lot of the other shots. But still going to make it over that fence pretty easily. And with the low wind. Yeah, you, really you mentioned to... about the ground play. I, I wonder if Niklas is just trying to use the ground to slow him down rather than a spike. It worked out well for him in that case as we jump ahead to Gannon Burr on a, a few cards ahead up on hole seven with a nice birdie putt. And a little low weak side. But in nonetheless for Niklas, back to back yeah. to start his round. What I like to say on those is pace was just right. <laughs> is Niklas looking for a pretty clean turkey to start his day. Shouldn't have much trouble there. And Calvin unable to see the bottom of the basket as it kind of projects over that ridge. His uh, his return to competitive play after taking Waco off. Calvin in good form. Yeah, and just look at the difference in these flags here. Such a different day here standing up on, full, on hole four's tee. Nathan, something interesting about the, about the wind. I don't want to harp on it too much, but it's a different direction than we had in almost all of the days of practice as well. Uh, yeah, which absolutely so. I think that subtly changed the way that players had to play some holes as Jake Habenheimer going big for the putt on hole four for his birdie. And Matty O backing it up not to be outdone. But yes, in practice days, definitely feeling that tailwind on hole four. Never got to feel that headwind. Niklas, looking for a six-pack of his own, is now five for five. And 
and the force over shot for his second on hole six and going to be rewarded with the tap in bird. And for MPO on this second day of competition, hole six was 0.34 over. So Niklas gaining 1.34 on the field with that birdie. And what I believe is the hardest line to throw on hole seven, going to the right side with a slow stand up, that right-handed backhand, Niklas just absolutely parks it for seven birdies in a row. Calvin going to play the left side. Suggestion of turnover, but does snap up to flat. And then perhaps the little more favorable slight flex forehand. And Jake with the big stop there, going to have three of them right inside the bullseye. And Gannon has a pretty hot round going here. He was six down through five after that eagle on two. And that's going to put him all the way to 13 under par after that putt there on 16. Matt Orham on hole 10, the downhill island hole. This one was the scene of a couple different fireworks shows. But love seeing this touchy backhand flex line. And an eagleable par five on 11, especially with the low wind. Downhill, 1,000 feet. Niklas able to take advantage of that pretty easily there in circle one. Gannon Burr, the fist bump as it's still in the air, closing out the hot round of the day at 14 under. Jumps himself onto the lead card for day three. Yes, yeah, 78% birdie rate or better with that eagle thrown in there. And Orem makes quick work of hole 12. This is one of the few holes that remain the same from the 2023 edition. As Matteo told you, he had that 50% birdie rate the first round, able to increase that to 67 here in the second round with the lower wind. And we saw Jake with a stepper earlier. This time, oh yeah, the big celebration as he converts his par putt on 13. It only shows up as a par, but that's huge to keep the momentum of a round going, Nathan. Yeah, every time. Par putts to after going OB feel better than birdies every once in a while. Not all the time. As Niklas continuing his hot streak Puts it right inside the bullseye here on 15. Kind of bounce him back, actually, after a bogey on 14. And similarly, Matt Orham was plus three in the prior two holes, but able to convert here. We love that bounce back stat here on Gatekeeper Media. As there it is, Niklas bouncing on back. See if he can continue. He's got his drive on 16, another forehand. So you just can't push too far. You've got some bunkers. This one, it's a pretty simple flight, but the, the way that it shapes for your eyes makes it look more difficult. And Niklas had gone out of bounds early on hole 18. So he's going to have to settle for a bogey there. Heimberg for his bird on 18. And yeah, gets to run it down from outside C2. Huge putt to finish his back nine at five under par. Putting him seven under for the round. Strong finish in his comeback after taking Waco off. And man, just watching that back shows the spin rate on Calvin's putt. Pretty amazing. Niklas going to take a two-stroke lead after moving day, going into the final round. Big opportunity yeah. for him. Yeah, a couple players from Chase Card and back jumping on the lead card during the second round. And 
Matt Orm going to continue to be on coverage, but he will be jumping up, as you noted. Uh, and as we go into this FBO final round, so much, uh, mostly we've dodged weather to this point. Uh, but once again, it's going to kind of rear its ugly head as the lead card is going to have to deal with a, at least a couple delays here. Yeah, some delays and a kind of extended delay, it seemed like. Uh, didn't I had just gotten to the course. Everybody's just kind of hanging out, you know. Um, safety is good but it just feels strange sometimes when you're in a competition mode ready to be out there on the course so we'll see Kristen Tatar as always trying to make a charge for a a win a podium spot and very early the ace run on the elevated basket yeah and get some good tree love as well to keep her from skipping too far away Haiti Lena first appearance on gatekeeper media's uh at least stateside coverage and boy what a way to start nathan yeah i can't do much better than that I'm gonna tap in a birdie on hole one is Kristen tatar gonna start back to back and ali smith gonna do the same uh ali shot six under for her first thousand rated round ever in round two uh, so well-earned chase card spot in this round three. Yes, indeed. Is Kristen going to... Seems like we saw that shot from Owen already last round. But Kristen going to tap in her three for three start. And carrying the out of bounds. Wind's kind of dancing it. But not a problem. About 20 feet long for Lena. Yeah, I'd say the wind is a little more similar to day one today, but a bit more inconsistent. Yeah, peak intensity about the same, direction certainly the same. But I agree, uh, there, there was some up and down variety to it. We've just got a bunch of putts from Kristen so far got the putter going here during the final round and a nice forehand here on the island hole 10 and up to that point that put Kristen at six under par continuing to jump up the leaderboard Allie Smith the wind lifting lifting and dragging it back for uh, about a 20 footer on hole 12 we'll see it from the other side yeah use the wind nicely there getting it out wide Letting the wind drag it back over to the basket. See a nice gallery out there. And 17. Par 4 playing out into the field. Elevated basket. Kristen is going to park that. Gorgeous flex forehand. Yeah, well executed. Lots of flex on that. Having to go with over stability again to fight that wind. And should be no surprise after all the highlights that we saw from round two. Own Scoggins going to take down this elite event. Yeah, double digit round again the last round. 10 under par. So exciting to see her get that done. Yeah, some someone who only has friends on the course. Only has friends on the course, even though she just beat everybody by 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well and earned. Gonna, gonna, gonna take home a Stetson. Boy, Nathan, have it. How, how do we come down from that? How do we top that? I don't know. I, I was almost ready to just not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but 
here we are moving into the MPO finals where we have an opportunity for some new winners here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Yeah, potentially. A lot of folks in contention. And uh, Nathan, a little bit of a curious setup here. When's the last time you played 15 holes in a round? I don't know that there's ever been a 15 hole round I played before. Um, I have been involved in some weather delays where we turned into nine holes and I believe 12 holes one point in time. Uh, but pretty strange. This is the first time it's been decided before the round. Uh, 15 holes after that weather delay. Um, the call was made. Lead card was not going to finish unless we played 15 holes. Yeah, so three par threes being removed. Everybody effectively takes par on those. And Cole Redown, Anthony Barella going to get us started here on hole one. Oh, this is fun. Needed a bit of a longer run up. Going to stand on the concrete around the trees there. And worked out nicely. What do you think about those? Um, I, don't, I don't know exactly what to call them. But how do you feel about those? Well, I mean, they're they're part of the golf course more than anything. Um, I don't. I think it's a little random whether you end up in them, but I don't mind having bunkers in disc golf fairways. I think it can kind of make for more specific landing zones. Yeah, I I really enjoy the the aesthetics of them and think um, think that they can come into play if you're not careful enough. And here's what we've been waiting for, Nathan. The full send on hole five. And Anthony Barella definitely won to full send. He's going to get all the way back to pin height on the left side. Hard to get all the way left. He's actually gone long. Comes back for what we'll call the easy eagle here. Yep, it all counts the same, though. And on a hole of a very similar length, but much different technicality, AB showing off all the skills as he takes that approach shot. And now for a birdie putt from about 30 feet. And just, just the right pace. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's what we'll say. <laughs> we saw Calvin execute this shot very well in round two. This time a little wider to the left. He's asking it to fight back. And like Missy Gandon using that entire fairway. Going to slide up there for an easy birdie. Now for par on the eighth. Calvin going to stick it. Hole eight. Very, very challenging in this final round. Average .15 over par. On the ninth, AB from the very, very left edge of the landing zone. And such yeah. good control into the green. Yeah, executed very nicely. This, uh, this very narrow peninsula is so challenging to get onto. And boy, that's about a 250-foot stroke gained for Ellis. Couple strokes couple strokes gained there he slides in bounds calvin going low and driven to avoid that win gonna end up inside circle one and anthony barella gonna convert the birdie not an eagle today uh, although there were about six or seven players who were able to card the birdie i'm sorry the eagle on 11 Skip hole 12, and now we'll play hole 13. Yeah, 415 feet. Big highs are over this river that's here. Calvin, no problem on the distance. Just going to easily fall back in behind the basket. And I want to shout out Tristan Tanner. I saw him ace on that hole 13 that we just saw. I also saw Trevin Crow ace hole 10. So maybe I'm the new ace watcher, ace witness? Possibly so, the fish witness. 
As we almost saw Calvin Heimberg, ace hole 17 here. Let's see how close he really was. A little short, but a very credible bid at over 400 feet with a, you know, some difficult ceiling and shape to it. Yeah, maybe 399. That's in there. Either way, at that point, Calvin Heimberg was tied for the lead with that birdie putt. And Calvin had gone OB, trying to get up and down here to save the par. Yeah, kind of going for broke, doing what he has to, to to make a run at it. Calvin's par putt to get to 26 under is going to lip out right side. Oh, and just a bit pulled. And just look at this. 15th hole. Look how dark it is. Here we see Kyle Klein anxiously checking scores to see what the result is going to be of the lead card coming in. Yeah, Niklas. Able to connect. Circle two on 17 and 18. And you love the visceral excitement from everybody here for Niklas. Yeah, and just for Niklas, you don't see that, you don't see him that excited too often. Or if you have at all. I don't I have not <laughs> seen him show this much emotion. It's so neat. Such an awesome thing to see. Accomplishing a goal he set out for himself. So there it is. Niklas Antila riding steady play to a final score of 27 under. And, and that's big for him. That's big for Finnish disc golf. That's big for the U.S. tour. Uh, Niklas has been, has been pushing for a couple years in majors and elite series events. So Owen Scoggins... Niklas Antila, both going to move up that leaderboard with uh, some signature wins for them. Yeah, absolutely. Both their first wins this year on tour. Niklas's first win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Can't have a much better ending to uh, what seemed to be an almost not played weekend to only three holes short. Had an awesome time out here in Austin. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to coming back. And uh, Gatekeeper will be covering some of the U.S. Women's Championship this weekend. And then uh, more chase card highlights from the Texas State Championships. Can't wait to see all you guys out there.